Welcome to Word Connect with Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, a teaching ministry where believers are trained to be established in the truth of God's Word. For more information and free downloads, please visit www.thepastormax.ng. Everybody say God. God. Honors faith. Remember, I want to qualify this. Jesus was not raising a special offering. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There were no special promises attached. Jesus did not say, if you empty your account, God will empty your problems. There were no special appeals. This was a regular service on a regular day. This woman gave out of faith. I, I tell you, you know, when I read the Bible now, I, t- I tell myself, there are many people in this Bible that should inspire us. Look at this dear woman. Why give your two saints? Especially when there are rich people there. You just conclude, ah, thank God, thank God. Uh, you know, there are people like that. Hmm? Once they see a wealthy person in a meeting, they just refrain. Ah, thank God our source is here. Hmm? <laughs> May other people's prosperity not stop you from, from giving. You just have this mindset. Hmm? That, oh, there are some people who have. They will give, they will give, they will give. What about you? What about you? What are you giving? And you know, sometimes even for pastors, that's why some pastors actually are broke. You know the reason why? Because some pastors just set themselves as receivers. They never give. So they are just receiving. In fact, if you don't give to them, then they will harass you. Why will you allow your man of God to suffer? Do you want to suffer? <laughs> One day I was in a meeting and I heard the pastor preach. You know, when I hear certain things in certain meetings, I don't bother to give because I just tell myself, oh, this is not worth it. The man says, if you want to develop, you must have envelope. <laughs> See, envelopment is the key to development. <laughs> You know, you know, sometimes when you're preaching and those nursery rhymes flow. And you know, see people are writing down. If you want to develop, you must have in the loop. You know, it just makes sense. <laughs> All right. Maybe we'll do a series like that. Envelopment for development. <laughs> Where people are rightly taught and they have a walk with God, generosity will not be a problem. The Lord can get people to give to the kingdom more than you can ever do manipulating people. Are you following what I'm saying? In Exodus 25 and Exodus 35, uh, when God asked Moses to, bring the, to raise an offering, he says, as many as the Lord stirred their hearts, they brought. Let's read on. Second John chapter 8. But thanks be to God who puts the same earnestness on your behalf in the heart of Titus. For he he not only accepted your appeal, but being himself very earnest, he has gone to you of his own accord. So Titus is actually coming to collect this offering. You know, in those days, there were no bank transfers, so people actually had to go collect the money and take it. We have sent along with him the brother whose fame in the things of the gospel has spread through all the churches. When I read this this afternoon as I was getting ready for the meeting, I was just thinking, look at how they introduced this brother. Hmm? Look at how they introduced this brother. Look at this. They said, we have sent along with him the brother whose fame in the things of the gospel has spread through all the churches. Oh my God. Look at the description. Praise God. Look at the description. They didn't, tell, they didn't call his name. They said, this brother's fame for the things of the gospel has spread. That means it was the zeal of the brother that spread around all the churches. Look at that. Let's, let's, let's look at it again. Can you see that? Come on, everyone. Can you see that? Look at it. Yeah, look at it. It says, we have sent along with him the brother whose fame in the things of the gospel has spread through all the churches. If we were to describe you today, can we describe you as the sister? Whose fame for the things of the gospel has spread in all the churches? 
How many of you think that's a good description? You don't think so? Huh? Hey, come on. Do you think we can describe you like that? That you are the brother whose fame for the things of the gospel have spread around the churches? Or we describe you as a brother whose fame for Facebook challenges has spread around the churches? But imagine how they describe this guy. His name was silent. Because he was so famous for the things of the gospel. What a way to describe a man. What a way to make your name in the Bible. The brother whose fame for the things of the gospel has spread around the churches. And if they say a brother's name spread around the churches, this was not the days of social media. This was not the days of internet. The guy went viral because of his zeal for the things of the gospel in all the churches in a day where there was no technology. How much passion this brother would have had. Glory to God. May we be described by the things that matter for God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? May you not be described and say, oh, well, uh, we're talking about John. Say, which John are you talking about? Say, the one who likes shoes. <laughs> Whose fame for shoes has spread around the churches. It's not bad to like shoes, but you know what I'm saying. May you not be described by earthly achievements in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you are being described in the courts of heaven, may you be described for the things that concern eternal life. Look at this. We have saints, along with him, the brother, whose fame, praise God, has spread through all the churches. And not only this, but he has also been appointed by the churches to travel with us in this gracious work, which is being administered by us for the glory of the Lord himself and to show our readiness. Verse 20. Now observe this. I want to make a point here. When this money was contributed for the saints, there was proper accountability. I want you to understand this. Because in verse 20 to 21, why was this brother taken to travel along with Paul? Look at, along Titus and the, the other ones where to take the money. It says, taking precaution so that no one would discredit us in our administration of this generous gift. Which means that church money is actually public money. Church money is not the pastor's money. And so therefore, if you are a pastor of a church and people give towards a particular project, you should put parameters in place that people do not discredit your administration of their giving. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Look at this. It says, For we have regard for what is honorable, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. So, you cannot administer church money and just say, God is seeing my heart. No, Paul says, we want to do what is right, is honorable in the sight of the Lord and also in the sight of men. So, Paul decided only one person is not going to take this money. Which means that when, when monies are given to the kingdom, there should be a proper accountability in the sight of men and in the sight of God. So, church money is actually public money. It's not, it's, it doesn't belong to the pastor. And so there must be procedures in place where uh, there is transparency, there is accountability because we do not want what will discredit us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And put that in your own life also. If you're in a position where you are handed public money, trust money, money in your group, money in your department, money in your compound. You know, I've heard very funny stories of people giving monies, uh, uh, you know, maybe in your compound, they gave you money, we want to buy broom in this compound, they now give you money. They now say, we'll buy the broom in June. Then you now, you now took the money in May, you know, April ending, that by the time they pay May salary, you will balance it. Is it your money in the first place? It's not your money. You don't have a right to it. You don't have a right to it. That's, that's actually discrediting your integrity. Never, listen to this, as a Christian, as a child of God, never loan from money that you are entrusted with. It is not yours. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? If you've taken something that's not yours, go put it back. Because 
we don't just hold pastors accountable, we hold ourselves accountable. And let me explain something to you again. When money is given to you for a particular purpose, don't divert that purpose without the permission of who has given it to you for that purpose. Imagine that this money was contributed to administer to the saints. Then Paul now said, ah, as we're going in Syria, we just discovered that the, the saints in, in Syria, they haven't eaten. So we decided to buy them food. Was that why that money was given? No. That's not why that money was given. These are little things that sometimes we don't pay attention to. Praise God. Funds are given to you for a purpose. In the first place, it's not your money. It's a money that is entrusted to you for something. So whenever monies are entrusted to you, don't regard it as my money. It's not yours. There's a purpose for it. The finances must go after that purpose. And that's why sometimes in, in a lot of ministries, uh, you discover after a time, the pastors begin to lose credibility because they announce, we are going to buy generator. We're going to buy generator. Or we're going to buy AC. We're going to buy ceiling fan. Hmm? And people now contribute, contribute, contribute. After all, you don't see ceiling fan. Then you now see brand two new chairs and stool in front of the church. Then the pastor now says, well, the money for the ceiling fan did not, is not complete, but you can buy chair." So we decided to just buy chair. No, you don't do that. You don't do that. You get back to the people and say, the money wasn't enough for this. Can we do this? <clears throat> Listen, this is Bible. Paul had all the integrity in the world. But you know what he says? He says, we will do what is honorable not only in the sight of the Lord, but what? Amen. Come on. Not only in the sight of the Lord, but in the sight of what? accountability and transparency is not just for God. It's for men. Praise God. Come on, I said praise God. Alright, it says let me read it from the Amplified. Listen to this. It says, for we are on our guard intending that no one should find anything for which to blame us in regard to our administration of this large contribution. For we take thought beforehand and aim to be honest and absolutely above suspicion, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. That means the way ministry funds are handled should be above what? Suspicion. You must do that. Not only as a minister of the gospel, but whatever contributions are given to you, whatever you're responsible for handling any uh, administration of the saints, relief of the saints. We're going to minister to the saints. We're going to help people. We're going to uh, reach out to people or something. And funds were given to you. It's proper that there is no suspicion there. You have to do this. Because this is New Testament apostolic pattern. And learn that in your own life. Whenever funds are given to you, learn to, uh, <coughs> learn to <coughs> um, give account for it properly. Okay? And how do you start? When they send you on an errand, return all the change complete. Don't, don't, don't allocate for yourself. You know, there's a way they will send you a message, and then you will suffer a lot in that message. You just tell yourself, that, listen, listen. Even if I eat from this money, even God will not be angry. He will not, but in the sight of men, there will be suspicion. Now, let me tell you something. Sometimes, not sometimes, most of the times, trust is built over time. And faithfulness in little will be what? Will be faithfulness over much. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And if you know you cannot handle money properly, and you're being put in a position to handle money, reject it. Some, some people are not, it's not like they are, they are thieves, okay? It's not like they will misappropriate the money. It's just that they don't know how to be accountable. You understand? It might just be a weakness. They spend without writing. Have you ever had to do that? You just spend, 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 then you start cracking your head. What did I buy? What did I buy? And then a lot of thoughts will be coming. You bought slippers. No, that slippers money was given to me by my mother. You bought by, no, 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 no. <laughs> don't, if you're not good with accounting, don't put your mind through that pressure. Because at the end of the day, you'll feel headache. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
So you, you, you've got to know where you're good. But why are we emphasizing this? Because this is apostolic pattern. This is apostolic ministry. Because one of the things that have come against the charismatic ministry over time is the fact that certain leaders were not able to separate the church money from their money and then people began to feel that a whole lot of church money is going over to the pastors. Which sometimes in the orthodox faith, you find a big demarcation there. But that's very, very important. So Paul says, taking precaution that no one will discredit us in our administration of this generous gift. For we have regard for what is honorable. Note that scripture, note that verse. Have regard for what is honorable. You don't even sometimes need to be asked of the account. Do it voluntarily. Not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. We have sent with them our brother, whom we have often tested. Look at that word. Did you see that? Hey, church, did you see that? What did they do to this brother? No, no, no. If you say they tested it, that's not scriptures. What did they do, what did they do to this brother? They often do what? That means they tested him how many times? Somebody say often times. They tested him how many times? Several times. So many times. Can you see Paul? Can you see Paul? Paul is saying, listen, the guy we sent to bring the money is somebody we've tested many times. So that means they gave him small money. The guy was accountable. They gave him another money. The guy was accountable. They gave him some other money. The guy was accountable. When it was time to go and bring the big money from Jerusalem, he said, you know what? Send that guy. But imagine if he, fa if he failed the test and Paul was there. They gave him, sent him small errand on church. The, the accounting balance. Send him again the accounting balance. And then they were looking for who was going to bring money from the saints. Say, ah, we, we nominate Brother Jay. <laughs> Paul, we say, leave him. Say why? Say me, Paul. That is saying, leave him. I know what I'm saying. Leave him. Just leave him. <laughs> Look at it. He <laughs> <It> says, <laughs> whom we have often tested and found diligent in many things, but now even more diligent because of his great confidence in you. I want you to see these characteristics about these people. They are not big names in the scriptures. But these are the characteristics we need today. How many times do we fail the little test of diligence? Hmm? Some of us, little leadership responsibility, we fail the test. And yet we want to be big leaders. Hmm? Little responsibility at our workplace. Little responsibility, we fail. But Paul says this. He says, we've often tested this guy and we found him diligent. And so, he can carry out this assignment. Let me tell you this. Pay very close attention to this. People are watching you and people are making observations. You are one recommendation away from your highest dream. You're one recommendation away from that thing you look like it's a big opportunity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Come on, I said, are you hearing what I'm saying? People are watching what you do. People are watching how you go about stuff. Those little things, those little assignments that, it, that is given to you, people are watching. A day will come when someone will be... <laughs> oh my God. A day will come when someone will need a big recommendation and they call and say, do you know somebody who can do this? And your name flashes up to their mind and then... The Holy Spirit remind them, not diligent, not diligent, not diligent. You say, I don't know. Because when somebody trusts you and somebody recommends you, they are putting their reputation on the line for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's very important. Let's read on. We have sent with them our brother whom we have often tested and found diligent in many things. I really like this. They found him diligent in many things. Not just one thing. We must learn to cultivate the art of diligence as Christians. Diligent at your workplace. Diligent in your approach to things. Diligent in the assignment that God is giving to you. Diligent in your purpose. These are the things that would open door to greater things. Because whatever resources the Lord wants to give to us as a church, it'll take diligent people to manage it. Whatever resources the Lord wants to pass through the body of Christ to be able to reach the nations, it'll take diligent people to manage it. 
And these diligent people have to come from the local church. Praise the name of the Lord. All right, he goes on to say, verse 23, As for Titus, he is my partner and fellow worker among you. As for our brethren, they are messengers of the churches, a glory to Christ. Look at this. Oh, thank you, Lord. Verse 24, Therefore, openly before the churches, show them the proof of your love and our reason for boasting about you. What was the proof of their love here? Giving. He says, listen, before all the churches, show them a proof of our love, which is what? Giving. You remember, Paul was writing this letter to them because he was inspiring the Corinthians to give like the Macedonians. He was using people who were in deep poverty to inspire them to give. Now, we've gone through this second Corinthians chapter 8. I also want to use it to inspire you to be generous to the things of God, to be generous to the kingdom of God, to be generous to the proclamation of the gospel, and also, more importantly, to be diligent in your assignment. We need to have believers who are diligent in whatever God has called them to do. And we also need to have believers who are generous to the kingdom of God. Giving is an act of faith. Giving is an act of worship. It is accepted according to what a man has. You don't need to be bullied. You don't need to be manipulated. You don't need to be promised heaven and earth. If you have given yourself willingly to the Lord, your treasure will follow your heart. If you've given your heart to the Lord, your treasure will is going to follow your heart. Hallelujah. Let's, let's bow our head. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Tonight we, we come before you and we just rededicate ourselves to you where giving is concerned. We pray, Father God, that you would cause your word to burn in our hearts that we will become generous in the things concerning the kingdom in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We know you've been blessed by this telecast. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805- 888-7575 Pastor Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video format. To purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, please call plus 234-805-888-7575 or send us an email office at pastormax.ng also available are free downloads from www.thepastormax.ng. God bless you.